I have a need to solder some more copper bar. The last time I had to solder some, all I had was an 80 or so watt pencil iron. Needless to say, it was a struggle. A comment I got on that video said that I might want to look at some soldering irons made by American Beauty. So I did, and I really liked what I saw. So I ordered the 3138X 175 and a chisel tip for it. Well, let's see what a sort of expensive 175 watt soldering iron looks like. The stand looks pretty simple. Everything else sealed in a plastic bag. A little instruction manual with an Allen wrench stapled inside the front cover. The iron itself. Nice feeling cord, definitely not PVC. Feels like rubber. It's got a bit of weight to it. Looks very nice. The stand is very simple. The legs are quite loose in it. I'm sure that helps with less heat transfer to the legs, but I'm going to crimp the edges a bit to keep the legs from falling out when I pick it up. There, that's better. I'll always have it on a silicon mat, so it shouldn't cause a problem and the legs can still be removed. The iron has a very solid feel to it. The tip is held in place with an Allen set screw. It's a pretty loose fit in the heating element. Looks like a solid piece of steel the tip fits into. They sell a brush set to clean the heating element. I could see where one would need to every so often clean the oxidation off the inside of it. I would expect to have to keep an eye on the set screw, make sure it stays tight, especially after a few heat and cool cycles. But when tightened down, the tip is good and solid. The handle really is nice feeling. The whole thing has such a nice solid feel to it. The power cord is almost six feet long. That's one thing I don't remember seeing any info on, the cord length. The chisel tip, 43C. These things are just huge compared to what I'm used to using. Now the iron comes with a diamond shaped tip. I ordered the chisel tip because I thought it might give better heat transfer to the flat copper I will be soldering. Well, let's fire it up and see what it will do. Time for it to heat up. Three minutes from about 68 degrees to melting 6337 tin lead solder. By five minutes, it's cooking. I'm going to test on this quarter inch by three quarter inch copper bar. Now it does have some holes in it, but if this iron can solder on this, it will do everything I need it to. I just brought this copper bar in from the shop, so it's cold. Less than 50 degrees. I'm not going to preheat it with a heat gun, just going to use the soldering iron. It's not taking long for a bar that was feeling so cold to now be approaching hot. Solder starting to melt, and I'm not going to be able to hold it by hand much longer. That's pretty good. I think the 175 watts is going to be okay.
This little piece is a quarter inch thick by a little over half inch wide. If this iron will solder these two together, I'm golden. I'm putting some extra flux on. Of course this small piece heats up fast. Get the pieces aligned. And make sure my fingers don't touch the copper. Looks like the solder is melting on the bottom bar. Going to add a bit more and see how it flows. I'll let it cool and see what kind of solder joint I have. Looks like the solder flowed great. Can't get the top piece to budge, so I don't think it's a cold solder joint. Can't really see it on camera, but it looks like the solder flowed all the way around the holes. Very nice. Guess I'll have to heat it up and pull them apart to know for sure. Let's see what the tip and iron look like after some heat. Well, it's not shiny silver anymore, but it's still nice looking. Going to separate the pieces and see what I have. It definitely takes a bit of time to get the copper from room temperature, a little under 70 degrees to solder melting temperature. Now if I was going to be soldering quarter inch copper bar all the time, I think I would have been better off with one of the bigger irons. But most of the copper I will be soldering will be in the range from 0.01 inch thick to maybe an eighth inch thick, and not very big pieces at that. There were two big factors in my decision to go with the 3 8 inch iron over the 5 8 inch. Weight was one. The 5 8 inch irons are over a pound heavier, actually almost twice the weight. The other was the tips. The 5 8 inch tips are over twice the price of the 3 8 so consumables over time will be less costly. So I decided to go with the highest wattage 3 8 inch iron, the 3138X-175. That has got to be getting close, getting a few bubbles from between the two pieces of copper. Oh yeah, that's hot. Wow, the sorter flow was great. That's going to work just fine. After using the iron a bit, I'm very happy with my decision to buy this 175 watt iron. There are cheaper high powered sorting irons. Well, cheaper in the short run. It seems like American Beauty has been supplying repair parts for their irons on the decades time scale. The main repair parts are listed on the same page they sell the irons on. Sure don't see that very often. And I can't remember the last time I bought something that plugged in that was made in the US. Was it worth paying a premium for this iron? Only time will tell for sure. It looks top quality. It feels top quality. I don't see any skimping on the build of the iron. Any criticism I had would be directed at the stand. And even there, it's made of pretty thick sheet metal. Watch for this American Beauty in action in some upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.